what's going on everybody it is your favorite auntie mo and i am back i am back did you miss me because i damn sure miss y'all we are back for another episode review of love after lockup let me scoot over i feel like i'm off balance a little bit i am this is Love After Lockup, season 2.5.3.0. Y'all already know, episode 43, between a rock and a hard place, y'all. Before we get into the review, regular church announcements. If you have not done so just yet, please subscribe to my channel. Before you leave, let me know that you stopped by. Give me a thumbs up or a thumbs down and then hit that notification bell so you will know whenever I upload new content. Y'all, look, before I get into everything, I want to first and foremost start off by saying thank y'all from the bottom of my heart. As y'all see, I put out a post on Saturday. My brother was involved in a car accident. Um, he is still in ICU right now. He is doing good. He's 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 fighting. He's not giving up. And he's 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 got a long road ahead of him. Um, that's why you're getting this review late. I do apologize, but. I put this post up um, on Saturday just to guys, you know, let you guys know that the, the videos will be late and just to ask you to keep him in your thoughts. And the love that I got from so many of y'all, I, I, I had no, I, I was not expecting love like that. So thank you from the bottom of my heart to everybody that reached out to, to emails, to response to the, you know, just saying well wishes to inbox on my Instagram, like, thank y'all, thank y'all so much, y'all just don't know what that means to me to know that you're looking out for me, because you, you, I mean, not looking out for me, you're looking out for my brother, on the strength that you care for me, and I thank y'all so much, so, so much for that, he's still fighting, so please keep him in your thoughts and in your prayers, um, he's hard-headed, and so I'm thinking that big rock hard head of his, <laughs> Help save him. So y'all just please keep my brother Larry in your prayers. All of us in the family call him Pookie. So please keep Pookie in your prayers. I will leave his Instagram information down below. Um, should you just want to go and flood his Instagram with so much love, tell him Auntie Mo sent you, aka your little sister Nikki, <laughs> sent you um, over there to spread some love to him. Also, y'all, as we already know, the tragic death of an NBA legend, Kobe Bryant, this past what yesterday it's just it's unbelievable unbelievable and i think what's being I, i'm not saying what's being lost but a lot of people are not talking about the other people that lost their lives as well yes kobe and his 13 year old daughter gianna they lost their lives in a helicopter crash but so did you know there was few other people there were her i wrote their names down because i don't want to get them wrong Alyssa. Altobelli and her two parents, John and Carrie Altobelli. There was Peyton Chester and her mom, Sarah Chester, as well as Christina Mauser. She was the mother of three and a wife as well. And the pilot, I believe his name is pronounced Ara Zobayan. Y'all keep them in your thoughts. Keep them on your mind and in your prayers. Y'all, we are devastated. I can't speak for no, well, I'm sure I can speak. Y'all, it is sad to see somebody that was an icon that you seen as a legend, like, like to me, this is like the Whitney Houston death and, and the Michael Jackson death. Like, this is a big, big deal because this is somebody that we all knew, like we, we grew up with, you know, who, even if you didn't like Kobe, you loved him at some point in time. Even if you love him now, you didn't like him at some point in time. Everybody's had a love-hate relationship with Kobe, but Kobe is the man, he is the legend. And big prayers go out to all the families right now, to the Alto Belly kids that lost their mother, their father, and their sister. I can't imagine what them kids are going through right now. God bless that family of, of three and, and that husband having to navigate through life now with them kids. Lord bless them all. I, I'm... I'm mm. Oh, yeah. Hopefully, y'all are ready for this review because I'm ready to give it to you. I spent too much time trying to fix up my damn makeup and I'm not going to mess it up. So let's get right on up into it. All right, y'all. So we're going to start with Marcelino and Brittany, right? Now, this was sort of touching. Um, I'm going to just skip right to it. You know, early in the day, Marcelino and Brittany were sitting down talking. Brittany had her sister over there because she know um, Brittany ran away when she was 12. 
ever since she was 12, she had a hard life, hard knock life. She had to make it out here on these streets. And so she wants to talk with her mama, let her mama know, like, look here, this shit I had to do to hustle and survive after I ran away when I was 12 and you just went off and you left my ass. I want you to know the shit that I have to go to to get to where I am right now. Now, Marcelino said, I want you to be nice on your mama. And her sister said the same thing. Now, look here, you know your mama ain't ready for all this conversation like this and it's going to be some hard shit that I don't know you're going to tell her. But at the same time, you know, we understand you got to get it off the chest. Brittany, like, look here. I'm not finna sit up here and do that fake and phony shit. I love my mama. I love my mama dearly. But I need her to know why I am the person that I am today is because of what I had to go through to get here to where I am, right? So later on, she goes and she meets up with her mama in like this real deserted looking park. When they pulled up, I was like, damn, y'all couldn't go meet at um, Chili's or no damn where? It's scary out here to look hot as hell. So they sitting up and they talking and Brittany's like, mom, look, I just want you to know that when I ran away when I was 12, you know, I met this guy. He was 30, you know, he was her first boyfriend. She was 12, he was 30. Sam was like he basically like pimped her out or whatever, had her doing all these things with these adults because they knew that she was a minor, knew that she was easily brainwashed. They were keeping her high and, and all this and the other so they were able to take advantage of her, take advantage of her body and her mind and all of that. And her mother, it was heart-wrenching for her mother to hear that because you know her mama tried. You know, her mother was sick as well. She had her own addictions that she was dealing with, so she tried as hard as she could to make it, you know, work. You know, but, you know, Brittany was like, look here. Let me go on here. Let me show you something. One more thing. I got to get off my chest. So she took her over there to this, like, deserted place or whatever. Child, she said, this is where I used to sleep. Baby, it looked like where they take, where the mob take a mat when, when they about to propel. That's what it looked like. You know, it was just a big, open, deserted place feel with cactus or what is that hey or whatever that is is rolling through you know we have da -da 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 -da. Boom, no, no. that's what it looked like that's exactly and i ain't being funny that's what it looked like she said she had a sleeping bag she used to hide out in the bushes and this is where she would sleep at you know that's where she ended up because she had nowhere else to go she said you know the the judge got her when she was young you know because she was doing all these you know things and judge threw her away locked her up and basically she doesn't hold nothing against her mother but she does want her mama to know like look here this is where i ended up after you turn your back on me oop y'all hear him we in the hood, y'all. We in the hood. She like, look at mama, this is why I end up after you threw me away, but that's all right. I don't hold on against you. I just want to get past this. I want to let the past be the past, but I just had to get this off my chest. Otherwise, we weren't going to be able to move forward, make this shit work. You know what I'm saying? So they end up hugging now, and it was real special and real kind of sweet. And so they're going to move on. Y'all, so we got Cheryl and Josh. Let me tell y'all why Cheryl get on my damn nerves. Cheryl got a whole little attitude about her. And I don't like it. So she called Josh and it's like, look here, my car broke down. I need you to come pick me up. He was like, all right, cool. Where you at? She was like, I'm here. He was like, all right, cool. I'm finna go pick you up. But um, my mama finna be driving. Because you know a nigga can't drive. So uh, my mama gonna be driving. She was like, oh, all right. First of all, bitch, you need the help. What is all this grunting and, 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 uh, and, uh, and all of that? What is you doing with all of that for? So he go inside and tell his mama, uh, look here. Because look here, they at the laundromat. Mama up there in the laundromat minding her own damn business with somebody, baby. Probably one of her gang grandkids or something. Fold her clothes, minding her damn business. Here come Josh up in there. Oh, yeah, Cheryl is stranded and we need to go pick her up. Mama said, what the fuck they got to do with me? Look here, it's hot outside. She got her three-year-old with her. Her car broke down. We got to go get her. Mama say once again, the fuck that got to do with me? So as soon as they get there, Cheryl got her little boy and they get up in the car or whatever, right? And so uh, Mama Josh like, okay, so what's the plan? Like, what is what, what is we doing here? I know we coming to pick you up, but where is you going? Like, where is we taking you? And she's like, okay, so, you know, we're going to get an apartment in a couple days, hopefully a house, but, you know, apartment will do, like, you know, it's whatever. And Mama said, okay, so y'all going to be staying with me for a couple of days, I'm guessing. She was like, I mean, yeah, if that's okay. I'd have been like, oh, no, Josh, <laughs> did we talk about I mean, like, um, excuse me, hell no. Josh is like, um, yeah, you know, we can stay there for a few days just, you know, so we can get our own apartment, get out on the feet or whatever. Mama's like, okay, well, let y'all know, you know, three days, 
Tres dias. You need to get out. Come print day right now. I hope you understand that. He's like, yeah, we're going to do that as long as you know. Don't nothing else hold us up with this car because we don't know how much this car going to cost. So as long as this car don't cost that much, then yeah, we be able to say, er, time out. They ain't got nothing to do with me. You said a few days. I said three days. Three days. I don't care if you got to put your stuff on your back and y'all got to go sleep in the car where it's broke down in three days and you need to be up out of here. Y'all, so later on, they get back to the house and they all sitting around in the living room. It's awkward as hell because Cheryl don't like Mama Josh. Mama Josh can't stand Cheryl. And Josh just sitting there awkward as hell. He don't know what to do. The biggest thing, like Josh says, his mama and Cheryl are exactly alike. So two women with attitudes, they bossy as hell, they bullheaded. You can't tell their ass nothing. They're not going to damn get along. So mama's like, look here, we got a set of rules and regulations. I need you to know this here. You know what I'm saying? You're going to clean up after yourself. You're going to pick up after yourself, you and your child. I ain't paying for none of that. And Josh need to have his ass in his house by 9 o'clock. That's when Cheryl pops the whole attitude. Oh, I'm dumb. Okay, like I don't know how to do this. Girl, girl, all that mouth you got, you got five on the black hand side by now had it been Auntie Mo. Really, you wouldn't have been up in the company up in my house. That's just me, though. That's just me. But um, Mama say, look here. You can say how slick shit you want to say. Tres dias. I need you to vomit Y'all, Lacey and Shane. Oh my God. Okay, so Lacey is upset. We already know that John done got picked up by Popos. He back on that stuff. <laughs> and he finna be gone away for a long time, whatever, right? So Shane was out. Y'all remember last time he was out with his homeboys. His homeboy done dropped him off at the house. You know, this nigga was drinking all day. Then he moved into the new crib. This nigga was drinking at the house. He done went to a bar and drank. Homeboy done dropped him off at the house. He come home. Lacey ain't there. He waiting on the front lawn, sitting in a chair, drinking again. I say, wait a minute. This nigga got a pattern. Y'all don't see something wrong with this nigga drinking all day like this? Child, so she tells Shane, look here. It's about John. The police found him. And he had needles, and he's gone. Shane drunk ass like, is he, is he dead? He in jail? He don't know what the hell going on. So he happy because Lacey's like, yeah, he's in jail. Now, he asked Lacey, are you upset? She's like, um, I just wanted him to do better. No, but you lying. You lying. You broke the hell down when you called looking all over for his ass and the popos told you that and hemmed his ass up. She was devastated. You know what I mean? She was... We all know Lacey was devastated. But he tells her that, you know, well, she tells him that she just wants a good life. So Shane thinks that all their problems is over now that John is locked up. No, baby. No, baby. Uh-uh, baby. Your problems is temporarily on hold with John right now, but that don't mean nothing. Lacey finna be out here laying it low and spreading it wide to whomever else. You ain't finna be the only one, Shane. John tried to tell you that, but you know what I'm saying? It is what it is. We gonna let that be. Moving on from that. Clint and Tracy, y'all. Y'all, Clint done pull up to his mama house looking pitiful as hell. Child, he pull up, and he just pull up and he's sitting in the car. He just sitting in the car. Mama walk outside. She like, baby, it's hot out here trying to uh, shield the sun from her face. She like, well, you want to come inside, Clint? <laughs> He's like, well, yeah. <laughs> Child, he come inside. So mama like, Clint, you're scaring me, Clint. What's going on, Bubba? What's going on, Clint? He's like, well... You know, only, only only two things can keep me and Tracy apart. Either death or jail. Mom said she's in jail, Clint. He was like, yeah. What happened, Clint? Oh, my God, Clint. What happened? Clint said they found meth. Mom said, oh, God damn. Not meth, Clint. I thought she was going to do better, Clint. Mama broke down. Mama was sad. She had faith in Tracy. Tracy sat up there and lied to this woman. Faith said, I'm going to be a better woman for your son. I'm going to prove myself to you. I'm going to fight for his love. And she went out there and met the whole damn thing up. Child, just then daddy walk in. <laughs> 
Mama said, Clint, you want to go ahead and tell your daddy what happened? Daddy said, uh, Tracy got arrested. Daddy couldn't do nothing but laugh. He said, <laughs> again? What is this, like, number five? <laughs> well, what you going to do now, son? Of course, Clint said, that's his goddess. He said, that's his goddess. He got to get an album. Mama said, no, I don't think that's a good idea. Clint, daddy said, well, I'm not finna. I look here. I ain't like the bitch to begin with. Your mama wanted to give her ass a chance. I knew the bitch wasn't no good, but you wanted to give a chance, so I done gave her a chance, and I'm not giving her no more chances. I ain't got nothing to do with that. Mom said, look here. I'm not finna do that. Clint said, I just want you to like, <laughs> I just want you to support me. Mama said, no, uh-uh. That ain't how it works, Clint. It don't work like that. Clint, you just gotta let her go, Clint. Daddy said, you're not running my pressure up with this dumb shit. You go back to that girl, I, I don't want nothing to do with that girl. Don't bring her around here. She's going to be trying to steal my good salt and pepper shakers. I don't want her ass around here. Angela and Tony, y'all. Lord, Tony in that hot ass car. In Angela car. Sleep on the front. Your, your baby, he's swatting flies. Wiping sweat. Looking like a hot, pitiful ass mess. Girl, he goes and knocks on the door. Damn, Angela looking out the window. <sighs> Stupid idiot. Fucking Tony. Y'all know she mad. She mad as hell. Tony's like, please, baby. <laughs> I love you. Can I, can I just come inside? Like, baby, it's hot. I gotta take a shower for work and I gotta brush my teeth. Please, baby, I love you. And it's like, I don't care, Tony. You just, you, when is enough enough, Tony? I'm sick of you and your games and everything you tell me, Tony. I don't want nothing to do with you. You're, you're fucking pitiful. He said, babe, please. I, I, I have to get ready for work. And it, it's just so hot. Please. Big Angie, tell him, look here. You can go in there. You can bathe. You can wash your balls. And I need your ass out of here by 5 o'clock. By the time I'm home, by the time I get home at five, you better be out of here, Tony. He's better be out. Tony at the damn door, like, thank you. Oh my god, thank you, babe. I love you. Bye. Have a good, have a good day. Child later on, Donna Faye comes to the house for a little girl chat. Now you know Edge don't like when Donna Faye come over there because Donna Faye gives her ass straight no chase. She don't give a damn about her and her damn feelings. She was like, what the hell done happen now, Edge? What the hell done happen now? And say so he done came back on over there. You know, I was going to throw away the rings that he gave me, but I decided to put them back on. She said, sound like you pussing out to me, Ange. He started off in the car. Next thing you know, he's going to end up on the front porch on the couch and then in your bed, isn't he, Ange? And said, no, I'm not going to fall for the okie doke. I'm not going to do it, but I just love him. You understand how much I love this man, Donna Faye? You just don't understand. What I think at the end of the day is love wins. Donna Faye, that's, that's the dumbest shit I've ever heard in my life. And I was right there with Donna Faye. You sound dumb, Big Ange. You sound dumb. Donna the only one that see through all this BS and see what the hell is going on. But y'all, I, I got a feeling in my gut of gut that she gonna end up taking Tony ass back. And we gonna see her on the next episode of Life After Lockup. Where he done got locked up again. And she's sitting up there writing his ass. Y'all, this saga ain't over. It ain't done. Megan, Michael, and Sarah. Okay, so when we left off with Megan. No, we left off with Mike and his homeboy Rock. They was talking about Megan. He was saying, Rock was saying how he had feelings for Megan. Mike like, oh, you mess with my girl. He was like, yeah, I done already had her. Then my, uh, Mike... Mush rock in the face. Next thing you know, they sitting up there. Oh, yeah, so you got her. You like, you got feelings for her. I'm like, whoa, 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 whoa. What happened? He mushed him in the face. Is he okay? Did they fight? Did they laugh it off? Did he swing on him and knock his ass out? What happened, we TV? You owe me like a couple seconds worth of footage that we didn't see. I didn't see what had happened, though. Because it looked like he just mushed him in the face. And he was like, all right, you got that. But uh, look here, I really do got feelings for her. I was like, what the fuck just happened? 
Rock say him and Megan messed around. He said that they've been more than friends and that they messed around more than one time. They end up going upstairs asking Megan. Megan say, look here. What me and you had was the one time thing I kissed you. That was it. Rock claimed that he told Mike everything that supposedly them messing around. Now, Megan say they didn't mess around. Um, I don't believe that. If they didn't have intercourse, they had something more than a kiss. I'm just saying that because when the producers asked her, Megan looked real suspect. There was nothing about her response that read innocent to me. It read shady through and through. All fucking shade. So after she tells him that she not into him, he's like, I right, cool. You got that. He walks out and he leaves. So I'm like, this. after Rock leaves, then he's talking about look here, I get at you upset because I done did some sneaky things, but what you did was just uh, sneaky. I don't trust you and when I see some trust, I mean, I, that just makes me fall back. Now look here, Mike. Nigga, you done got married, had a whole baby, had a whole nother relationship, but you got the nerve to be upset when she pulls a you on you? Are you serious? And you thinking that your sin ain't as great as her sin. Like, nigga, do you even understand? Do you, do, do you listen to yourself? Do you listen to yourself in your head before the words leave your mouth? No, you don't. Because what you said was real damn stupid. Now, Megan still wants to pursue a relationship with him. Talking about, okay, going forward, the, going forward, I need to know what other females you with, who you talking to. He does admit that he's talking to other females. And she's like, okay, now you out here mad at me and you still out here doing whatever the hell you want to do. Megan, why is you still with him? Why even give him the ultimatum that if y'all are going to be together, that you want him to stop talking with other females? He has to cut that out altogether. How about you leave his ass? How about you just say, you know what? <laughs> you little nappy head nigga. You can't even do your damn head. No, I'm out. So she ends up leaving because she called herself mad. She ends up leaving, right? Child, later on, Sarah and her little manly homegirl, they end up going to the club. They hanging out. Sarah says she going to wash that man right out of her hair, girl. Her and her little manly homegirl finna go out to the club. They finna meet other dudes. They ain't finna be worried about Michael. Just for their ass to get to the bar and she steady talk about Michael. Child, next thing you know, some little Wayne head looking dude come walk up to him. He just wanted to get on the camera, child. He just wanted to get on the damn camera. Either that or he was in the payroll. He was on the budget. He had to go in there and make his little old appearance. He paid for a drink. They talking, chopping it up. Whoop the whoop, yada, yada, yada. Little manly homegirl acting like she all excited because Sarah's talking to this dude when girl. Girl. Anyways, after they, you know, get ready to leave from the club, manly homegirl sitting inside the little Uber. Sarah sitting outside talking to Wayne Head. Next thing you know, they exchanging numbers. Next thing you know, they slobbing each other down in the mouth like, I'm like, nigga, you just, bitch, do you not know strep is real out here? And then it's another foreign disease that they just popped up on the news. I forgot what the hell of it is, the name of it is, but that's real out here. Mono is real in these streets. Nigga, you wake up with a bum bump on your lip the next morning. Who fault is that? Yours. I'm not saying nothing against Wayne Head, but you don't know where the hell Wayne Head was before he came to you. That's all I'm saying. So she leaves out. She's happy because she done slobbed the dude down in the mouth that she just met. And she might wake up with a bum bump on her lip the next morning. But she happy about it, though. She'll take that. It is what it is. Child, later on. I don't know if it's the next day or whatever. Michael in the hotel, still in Fort Worth, look like he getting ready to go somewhere. Where he going, I don't know. Only person he know there is uh, Megan, unless he getting ready for Megan to come pick his ass up. Child, this whole time, he on the phone with a whole nother broad running his whole game. He going to say in a confessional, it don't matter what else, whatever he's doing with other females. He spent his money to come to her city and see her. None of these other females are in his city. I'm sitting and looking like, nigga, what? Okay, so he finessing old girl on the phone. I want to see you in that bathing suit. How long you work out? Whoop -de -whoop. Which, time out. Let me rewind a little bit. Nigga, that wasn't your money. These females is cash shopping your ass. You ain't got no money. You got money because they giving your ass some money. You ain't got no money like that. 
Child, he finessing the girl on the phone, whoop the whoop, yada, 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 about to finesse this bitch right on her drawers on the damn phone. He hang up the phone with her. Producers is like, okay, now, nigga, who was that? This fool going to say another one that I'm working on. Child, then Mike said what I think is by far the most nigga shit I ever heard in my life. He say, like Aretha Franklin said, what's love got to do with it? <laughs> Player got to play. I said, did this nigga just say what Aretha Franklin said what's love got to do with it? Nigga, that wasn't Aretha. That was Anime Bullock. You stupid, stupid. Yeah, but the episode ended from now. It ended on a real dumb note. It took us out with Mike and his dumb ass saying what Aretha Franklin said, what love got to do with it. I said, no, nigga, you need to listen to Aretha Franklin and get some respect for your ass so you ain't out here laying it low, spreading it wide with your little nasty, dirty dick ass. Y'all, hopefully y'all like this review. If it was anything that I missed, y'all already know. Drop it down below and let me know. Please don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and share. And I'm Timo. We'll see y'all in the next video. Peace out. What's going on y'all look here if you like this video do me a favor give me a thumbs up Share this video comment on this video all of that good stuff And if ain't nobody else told you today I sure enough love you and I sure enough appreciate you